Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one, the only, the as that we are here with. Well, it's one that it's a game I requested. Believe it or not, I was asking people to send me in the best Mo Grain replay they had, and this person has sent me a replay. Now I haven't watched it yet, and uh, we're all gonna pray together that it is worthy of an entire cast. But I'll tell you what, I'm excited at the fact that someone actually did this, guys. Again. Uh, I'm going to start doing a little bit more give and take with my audience. I'm going to ask you guys to send me in specific strategies and stuff like that. Like, I would very much like a Blood Pack Grey. I would very much like to see a Naga Brown in a good game. Send those to me and they are going to go right to the top. We want to see those. There have been a lot of requests for that. Also, give me your requests. I know you guys want me to play a Blood Pack Grey. You want me to do different races and I'm going to start doing those as well. So, let's go ahead and start this game right off the bat with who's in the game. As the Scourge in Northrend, we have the Dark Lord. Supporting him, we have Van as the Burning Legion. Down south, we have uh, M. J. Lovinen. M. J. Lovinen. Lovinen. Okay, he's playing Teal, the Fell Lord of Outland and Blackrock Spire. And up north again against the Scourge and the Legion. We're going to have the North Alliance piloted by uh, Davin Rary. As Lordaeron. Actually, I'm going to start doing these in, like, a geographical order. Supporting him as Dalaran, we have Herp Derpington. And as the Elves, we have Isaac2314. Down south, Dwarves. Who we got here? We got Wolf FF16. And our Dark Green player as Arathor is Windsair. All right, over in the Forgotten Lands of Kalimdor, forgotten even in my shoutcast, playing the Warsong Horde and uh, the Trolls as well. We have Growlithe. Ooh, I actually like the Pokemon reference there. Thralls Horde and the Torin is going to be La 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 Ka five two five, who has just left the game. That's that's good news. That's that that bodes well. And all right. So we have a gray and a light blue who are now... Alright, we're not even going to talk about Brown because he just left. You don't get... I'm sorry, I did say Pink's name, but I'm not going to say his name. Anna Gustafsson as the Night Elves. And let's go ahead and see what kind of uh, aggression we have here. Pink's units are just going to sit there not doing much. Blue is already fortifying Altrak Valley. But uh, Herb Durbington with a mix of some units here. Looks like he gathered up everything he could for an attack, but it's not going to be enough here. He could do some damage, but not a significant amount. Red seems to be focused almost entirely on creeping and has not moved anything over in Skolomance yet. Teal being completely non-aggressive as he just creeps the ever-living hell out of Outland. Well, that's fine. That's fair. It's fine enough. Oh, what am I? You know, he can do what he wants. It's not my business whether or not he's playing optimally. That's not the point of this game. The point of this game is to see how this all plays out. And we might have a very good blue and red. Oh, alright. Wait. What? Is that an orange pink? That looked like a pink pink, didn't I? I think Vay and uh, kind of hoping he can hold on here. Purple now going to go in for an attack. Oh, I'm sorry. Red has actually got Kel'Thuzad and his entire Cult of the Dam all bunched up over in Skullman's. And Blue's going to do his very best to hold this location. The Fountain of Health is extremely effective. And with this tower placed here, none of his enemies are going to be able to get in there and use that. Now, oh, no, no, Purple, go back. This is the perfect time. Orange is committing. You could win here right now. Get back. Ah, da, da, that's how you play. There you go, laddie. And Red is... Red's creeping. Red's really interested in creeping right now, and that may cost Blue a lot here, as unfortunately he's taking a lot of AoE damage. However, he is hacking apart Orange's units, and he can just shut her up. Stop her from casting that... Ah, ah, so much damage being done to everybody here. Van now on the back foot, however... Purple, I thought, had committed enough so that Red could flank him, but Red isn't using many of his units from Skullamance. In fact, almost a full control group worth remain down there, doing absolutely nothing. How's his money looking at the moment? 692. All right, Green's got a couple boats here trying to see if he can catch something out of the position. Blue is now fully retreated. Uh, Bayon is losing a lot here. He's got 1-0 upgrades. We still see a very passive teal. Only, only creeping going on right now in Outland and no push anywhere else. He could have brought these units down here, killed the poison trains, taken the control point, 
these four units are more than enough early on, seeing as how they just absolutely outmatch everything along this coastline, by a, except for the Murgol Raider, but you should have enough units by that point. Now, Blue is still trying to hold on here, uh, but his ally is absolutely atrocious at supporting him. The Dark Lord has three, 637. I'm getting the feeling Purple probably kills his own base. It's just a feeling, but I could be wrong. All right, all right, all right. They're killing off <laughs> peasants now, just fine. And unfortunately, I think Blue did lose his hero. There's no way they were gonna. Oh no, 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 no! Did he sneak out? He's trying so hard to sneak out right now. And sometimes you forget that that Dreadlord. You're like, oh, he's probably gone, or you know, perhaps your orange or green isn't up to date on his scanning, so he's not revealing that much. The Magi seem to be in good state right now. Kind of hard to tell where the... Okay, so Gray decided to stay here and go for Eastern Kingdoms. He's probably just going to let the Night Elves have the entire continent. However, Night Elves aren't moving that much. He's trying to control both forces, which is admirable of him. I'm, I'm very excited to see that. Teal? How are you looking there, buddy? Zero, zero upgrades, hasn't moved his hero, a lot of units still sitting around doing nothing, Outland still not completely creeped, even though he's been doing nothing aggressive. He does send a few units out of Blackrock to go ahead and hit this position, however I get the feeling that this is more of a small raid, and the minute Yellow finishes here, he's going to be whooping some tushy. Purple only has one more Paladin to go, and then he will be assaulting Vayans. Seems to still want to help out the Dark Lord. The Dark Lord, I'm guessing, sitting on quite a bit of money. Teal, Vayans very low, he's doing his best. Teal's got a lot of money, he's new. Wolf, a lot of money, probably new or overconfident. And it, everyone has a lot of money in this game. I'm guessing it's a bit of a noob game, and hosted or make me host, and that's fine. We can have noob games occasionally. The point is... The point is... I had a request. And that request is apparently going to be filled. Look at all the creeps in Kalimdor! Blue finally uh, creeping up. Z Zuldrak. I say Zulfarak, but that would be very, very incorrect. Full complement of mortar teams always one of the first things you want to get. They are effective against most of what you're going to be facing against Teal. Again, I say mortars and griffins for mobility and sheer firepower. Other people have been disagreeing with me, saying that they prefer Thanes. That is fine. You can have your opinion even if it's wrong. Here we go. I mean, there's really nothing going on. They're, they're destroying Blackrock together. They'll combine to take out Outland. Most of the interesting stuff is going to be going on here. Some destroyers taunting. All right, all right. I like this already. He actually did get archers, longbowmen. And since they do not benefit from the melee upgrades, they should be fine here. A few Eridar sorcerers just for that chaos attack is always welcome. And a lot of crypt fiends. 2-0 on his unit. Red seems to be going for mostly offensive strategy, building up, and it just I guess he's just going to mass. Hold on, hold on. We do have... Oh, oh, we have boats with things in it, and I think I spotted... A builder. Ooh, an acolyte. Holy crap, is this red actually going to turn everything around, convince them that he sucks, and then just Donkey Kong punch him right in the face? <gasps> Please tell me. I want this to be a come-from-behind story. With a young, restless, undead war. Okay, so they've lured here, and now they're going to actually... Wait, Grumash has the Doomhammer. He's attacking the North Alliance. Is there, is there any coordination going on here? Uh, I can't actually tell. Two, two upgrades mean that the North Alliance are now actually... Suddenly hard pressed. Wow, the Horde War Machine actually ran right over to Dalaran. It's wrecking some serious base right now. And if those catapults were to focus on the High Elven Magi, we could see how quickly they will be wiped out. Just a couple more volleys. A couple more volleys. And almost all of the North Alliance's healing is going to be out of commission here in a minute. Sure, they have a great position here, but if Red were to push his advantage... Oh, man, this is why sometimes I like to communicate what I'm doing. See, uh, Gray here doing a very good job. He's doing his very best, but I think he just ran out of money. No, he has quite a bit of money. He's just distracting. Okay, okay. All right, he's decided to be the wild... This is one of the fun parts of being an Eastern Kingdom's Horde, is you're the freaking wild card. You are the fly in the soup for everybody. You're just... You gotta do what you want. And sure, you're pretty sure you're gonna lose, but it doesn't matter, because you're gonna have fun. See, North Alliance a little bit confused now. Red, suddenly on the push as soon as i'm guessing as soon as he attacks he's gonna land here and begin to assault capital city free feed for us i'm not objecting see you say free but he did wipe out the majority of the healers he's going to continue to harass and be a thorn in your side 
and stop you from being able to focus completely on red. Now that's going to be dangerous. 3-1 upgrade, still focusing mostly on attack. Blue, no, we're fucking now. <laughs> Herp Derpington, or sorry, yeah, Herp Derpington. Derp Herpington would have been funnier. Gray is staying like a rad? Radical? What? There we go, the plague. Now is the time to attack. Now is the time to land. If he can, oh my god, if he can coordinate all this, it's going to be amazing. Now, even a single Frostworm in this position is extremely useful. You gotta make sure that they don't go too far ahead, because the archers will wipe them out very quickly. They do only have the light armor, and they take extra damage from piercing and magic. Which, the uh, North Alliance has an abundance. That's why you usually see anti-magic shell cast on them, because quite a lot of what they can throw into the air with any significant damage is magic. Here's the land. Oh my god, Blue also landed. Where did Blue land? Blue. Oh, okay, Blue is right ahead. This is a phenomenal attack. You fucking out. No, he didn't. He's not allied to anybody. The Scourge here is just wrecking face, and this is the importance of having a nice balanced force. Is you want to be able to make sure that while these this uh. They can, they can put a good line against you, is the North Alliance's biggest advantage. They can heal, they can do all this stuff, but if you can make sure that you have enough range units to be doing damage to their front line, and not just this massive melee that's getting AoE down slowly, you can put on a lot of pressure. Now, again, not necessarily guaranteed to work, and when we see that they are taking heavy losses, but I think that for the North Alliance, uh, the problem here is the fact that, well, there's two forces. Yes, sure, they are holding strong against this one. Sure, uh, actually, Gray just went fell, and, uh, and now he's breaking down the Dollarine, Dollaron Elite Tower. Our, oh, Flame Strike Sword is down. Green lost one hero. Did he lose both heroes? No, because he still has the aura for the range damage. That means she is here somewhere. Probably shooting big oversight. There we go, Sylvanas Windrunner. Ah, Red's got to be very careful. He's got to bring the meat wagons up and make sure that this cannon tower does not prove to be his complete undoing. Green's saying that nothing is moving. That is unfortunate. However, I will say that the coordination of this dual-pronged attack means that they probably wouldn't have survived anyway. I like the lockdown on the bridge. Keep those units there. Keep them locked down. Utilize your clerics to the utmost to make sure that even if your units aren't necessarily on that bridge, they still can't get past the bridge because of their own lockdown units. Orange? I mean, Purple's done a very good job holding so far. Uh, his army is still in relatively good shape. He's holding without major help from Orange because Orange is just getting wrecked right now. The fellow grunts and raiders don't seem to care. It's just a constant stream. Baron Rivendare went down, but that's okay because it is the melee hero in this clusterfuck of nonsense and there aren't that many heals out there. Tychondrius, however, should use his ability to go invisible and, you know what, you guys should just focus down that tower. That tower is your biggest enemy right now. Every shot is so effective. Sure, Capital Palace about to go down. I think the Paladin's probably going to get out before it dies, but it's going to be a close one. Not going to be close at all. It's actually going to have about a fourth of the health left. A third. Embarrassing. But he will lose that Silverhand Paladin the minute it is spawned. And... Green seems unable to move or do much at all, really. Red losing this fight, however... Alright, Orange has finally managed to stabilize with using using Battle Mages and hoping that his towers stay alive. However, these Dollar and Elite Towers, all but two are dead and being focused down right now with the Chaos Attacks, the Orc's biggest strengths. Red has no money, but he does have a decent sized army and an even bigger army over here. So hopefully, he'll utilize that. Needs to back up just a little bit and get them to pull in. Save as many units as he possibly can. And, uh. He's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it, is he? Alright, fair enough. Uh, yellow and dark green don't seem to be interested in... Push... <laughs> Alright, so he's decided to bunker up. Teal's not going anywhere. I don't know where dark green and yellow are. They're creeping. They're going to take this opportunity to expand, upgrade, do whatever they want. They haven't... Oh my god. Is... What is going on? These fire elementals may actually end up wiping out Teal's base. No way. Are they all going to just keep respawning endlessly until... 
This is embarrassing. This is also why Flame Mage in Footman vs. Grunts, really good. Alright, he's dropping a stasis trap. Hoping that'll give him a little bit of breathing room. Most of these units will die here in a minute. Get Kel'Thuzad? No, Kel'Thuzad's still alive. And now he's been flanked. Oh no, his whole army here, and it's completely cut off. This is terrible news. Red did exactly what I was hoping he would do, and with the crown... To help him, he has gone invulnerable on most of his heroes and demis. The units get confused, thereby allowing him to get through. Should have put him on hold position or whatever he could have done. But he does manage to escape with Arthas, and I think... Probably not Uther. Uther's probably dead. Uther's dead. Garethos is dead. Arthas is the only thing left alive. The plague continues to just run amok. Oh, this is bad news. How's this going? Oh my god. These fire elementals... These fire elementals are the bossest things in the whole world, and I think they're like freaking invulnerable or something. Half these attacks are missing them. Alright, is he finally gonna clean it up? He's been fine. Alright, Herp Derpington left the game. Orange said, I'm out. I'm done. Can't handle this. It's too much. Yeah, yeah, Anderhal's dead. Anderhal's good, good, and dead. Uh, Grace still fighting a level 8 Gromat. Wow. He is strong. No healers, unfortunately, but he is strong. We could sneak up here and just hang out next to this fountain of health for a while. while. It is just covered in undead. That's not going to work out for him. Light Blue, what are you up to, buddy? Probably still having a good game, right? He's... Okay. Alright, he's got Maiev and Taronda. And... I like that he's going for Chandra. Chandra's fully leveled up with her multi-shot ability. So good. And in this case, since he has no ally, I wouldn't even object to him stacking the claws of attack and using that multi-shot to be a little bit of a punk. Ah! Purple apologizing to Green for failing him. Yeah, the Horde actually did spell quite the do. If Orange had been able to focus... On helping, I think it would have been a different story. Because green and uh, orange probably could have held here just fine against what we saw. And purple would have fought this army to a standstill. They had an excellent micro, good units. It was just, they couldn't handle it. It was 3v3. The North Alliance can't handle even odds. I'm kidding. Mostly. Yeah, there was a lot of unkilled citizens. They didn't have time. Well, actually, I think they had plenty of time. I think they had plenty of time to kill off all those citizens. Saying you never knew you used your navy, did you? No, but I'm not sure it would have helped. You can sometimes just park it over here and hope that'll work, but they had enough frost worms that it, at the end of the day it probably would have been just fine. Pink's killing off a few units here. I'm not gonna let him get out. Uh, just gonna chase him away. Gonna keep Zulfarak alive for a little bit longer. The enraged jungle stalker is not happy about this. Ah, he's just focusing. No, he's not focusing. Chandra's get the shadow leaf sentinel out of there. It's weak against normal attacks. There we go. Use the Mountain Giant to taunt. That works, too. Man, this gray is just ruthless. He had carry. He's going to kill everyone. But this, this is an Eastern Kingdom's Blood Pack Horde. That's beautiful. Not even Blood Pack. Well, he's not allied to them, is what I can say. Goes. Looks like they're all going to try to hold here. Teal? Still messing up. No upgrades. Still not creeping outland. Okay. That is okay. Okay. No, we've got some interesting players in this game. He's got all three of his heroes grouped up here. Not sure Kargath has moved. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. He has. He has a mask of death. So at least he went shopping. We know that much. Dark green and yellow already heading up north, but you know you can't get it until you've destroyed the castle, right? Or is he just going to try to attack. He's probably trying to, to attack the undead. He's going to run to a lot of orc warlocks is what's going to happen. Varrock Surfang, now level 9. I guess Grom kind of gets replaced eventually. Yeah, Grom's got... Rexar's still over there. Varrock is a hugely high level right now because he's the only hero over here. And I think that when he got... Now he's getting healed up. Okay, I was going to say, I thought maybe they, he got healed to full health. If you had a thousand latency, you'd lag out. Dark Green doesn't seem to realize he can't go in there, so that's that's special. He got claws of attack rather than boots of speed. It's also, it's also special. Did you guys take out Blackrock? Okay, you did. 
No one's going to kill off Ragnaros yet? Oh, that's fine. 11,000 health is a bit much to deal with this early on, even though you've probably got really good upgrades, I'd hope. 2-0. Two, zero. And 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, so, no. You have way too much gold. Way too much time. You have way too much gold. Way too much time. You have way too much gold. Way too much time. You have just enough gold. You have a little bit too much gold. You have... Eh, you don't... You can't have spend that much gold. You have the right amount of gold. Growlithe has exactly the right amount of gold, which is none, because he's just awesome. Warsong grunts. So, I guess... He didn't stay Blood Pack Horde. Oh, Varrock Surfang going nuts in Dark Green's lines right now. I think he has the upgrade advantage and a lot of magic damage to go along with it. So he's going to be quite good here with the sheer number of militia. They're focusing on Varrock. He's going to get the hammer. And oh no, the axe. So unfortunate. Korkron Guard gets summoned, but I don't think they're going to be enough in this instance. Dark Green will probably probably win this fight, actually, with this hero there in yellow coming in to reinforce. Gorhal still on the ground. However, the hammer... Oh, Doomhammer and Gorhal still there. Gray's doing a great job holding, but he has no way to res his hero over on this continent. I don't think he actually built anything that would allow him to do that. He keeps trying to pick up the items and get out of there. I think he might have managed to get one or... he. Oh, hold. Did he get a crown? Did he manage to ninja a crown right there? He's got to build a boat. He doesn't have any boats. He's trying... He's building a transport ship. He built the wrong thing. He's getting out of there with the crown. Get out of there with the crown. Get in the boat. 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 Oh my god, is he gonna get out of there with the crown? I think he did. Sure, he lost the doom hammer, but who cares? He got a crown. It's actually really funny to me right now. Is Red gonna push his advantage immediately? Oh wow, I like this positioning by Green. It's interesting. The Elven Ballista are good. The only problem is going to be the Frostworms, if they are utilized correctly. Gargoyles could distract the attacks, Frostworms would kill off the Elven Ballistas in a couple of volleys, and there's really not enough range units here to keep them from doing anything, and even Catapults would be a nightmare. Well, South Alliance cleaned me up, he said. But you're not done yet, buddy. We know that. Oh, sh shit, the Legion's actually being summoned. <coughs> in Capital City, alright. Now, if the South Lions push up and begin to assault the undead, interesting things could happen. Single hold cavalry unit being sent out. Why don't you guys like to creep? Creep. 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 Anything else left alive that they didn't creep? I'd like to but I'd like to complain a little bit more, but it doesn't say a oh, creep. 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 Definitely creep. Summoning. Nubarak has the Lord on Crown. I would have put it on Kel'Thuzad, that does make him an even greater target. However, he's... Oh, Kel'Thuzad's just harder to kill, man. He's always in the back lines. Nubarak's right on the front. Unless you make him tanky, a Nubarak, he, he's not that strong. <laughs> How am I doing? We've lost everything. Alright, now the demons are going to start streaming out. Yellow is looking like he wants to cross the bridge. Yeah, no, Squires get eaten up a lot. Uh, that's a good point. Again, it's the whole Thanes versus Dwarven Warriors thing. Is Do I want to have Thanes or do I want to have twice as many Dwarven Warriors? Because if I can keep them alive, they're worth it. Echo Bobo Week says Tia. I don't know what... He's still just... Okay, he's still just massing up. He's never going to move. He's going to continue to AoE this portal. And we've seen... This is the Iron Horde, basically. 2-2 two, two upgrades from Dark Green now. Gray, please stay in the game because you have just been awesome this whole time. He's got Rokan's got the crown. Oh, he could come back and try to do a little nonsense. He could ally the Night Elves. I wouldn't even object to that right now. Alright, Yellow's now causing all sorts of trouble. They're like, you haven't even killed... They can see Teal's control points while we can't right now, so they know Teal's not dead, and they're wondering why Yellow is up here. And the answer is because Yellow has way too much time on his hands and way too much gold on his hands with 1,700 in the bank. And Dark Green now sending in his units to try to do something. Well, Bolvar 4 Dragon level 5 looking pretty strong. And Blue does have the upgrade advantage, but not the positional or the compositional advantage. Uh, minus armor is going to wreak havoc. 
It's a good upgrade sometimes. The piercing rounds for the for the dwarves. Just not my favorite. Alright, Red's playing it slow and steady. Remember, as Rage, you can break these trees and slowly create a second entrance. It's an option. You can also land. You can attack from three sides if you want. You can attack from like a dozen sides if you want. Blue needs to flank right now. He needs to begin reinforcing this position. And flank around. And win. And win. That is exactly what will happen if he can catch them out of position. Come on, you have everything you need. 2-1 Infernals, a huge army of Felguard. Oh my god. Seriously, the flank would destroy everything here. Over in Kalimdor, well, Light Blue is just having a ball all by himself. It's his party and he'll cry if he wants to. And I need to figure out why there's no music. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Uh, I keep, I, I think, oh, oh, here it comes Artie. He's managed to lock down the Frostworm. An excellent ability there. The gate is being repaired slowly, however, those catapults will eventually kill off those poor peasants that are hanging out there. See, they're already taking some damage. However, the healing aura from green, keeping it just barely alive. Red's actually losing a ton of stuff here right now. This is a horrible position for him. He didn't think it through. Alright, so Red's kind of getting cleaned up at the moment. Even though he has 5-2 upgrades, he just doesn't have what it takes. The Dark Lord. Oh, but the gate did go down, so. Small advantage to red. However, green continues to harass his siege units. Doing quite a bit of damage. Meanwhile, uh, green's actually repairing his Elven Ballista. Smart move there. Gonna lose a, an elite unit. Come on, red. Are you trying to win by crashing my computer? That's that's the strategy. It's a pretty solid one at that. Blue, are you gonna flank down? Still killable. Still killable. Uh, Blue's gonna go for the straight on attack. He's gonna try to box him up here, but the fact that he has mortars and riflemen and Emperor Dagron Therasi and all kinds of stuff. Dark Green's had a predilection towards marshals and mass units rather than getting his elite units, which is interesting to see. Uh, I personally do like the Stormwind Champions. I mean, I have liked them since, since their original conception. They were, I just rushed for them and tried to hold. Fighting choke points and you were never disappointed. You could crush so many more numbers of Teal's units if you fought in the correct position. Teal's pushing out and getting crushed. Because Dark Green actually knows that this is the one time Outriders are good as against Fell Orc Raiders. So. Kudos to him, baby. Ooh. Oh, Mortar Team's Abomination just decided to screw right. He's like, ah, no. I don't want to go there. Please don't make me go back. They're tiny and angry. Oh, ah, ah, yellow's trying to pull him back. And if Red's not careful, he could die. This is the problem with Red. He wants to hold on so badly. God, these dire carrying beetles are very strong. <laughs> Keep forgetting how good they are. Unfortunately, uh, Red has not invested anything in a death infusion, which increases the health of his units. It's one of the upgrades from the graveyard. So they're not receiving any bonuses right now. However, they do have 10 total armor and uh, 28 to 58 chaos damage. So... Not really. A single forest troll axe thrower is gonna go. Uh, gonna see what happened. He's scouting. You know, there, there, a small force was sent to Netherguard. He wants to see what was going on. Cheeky little sod. Cheeky little bugger. All right, Teal, I like you. You're killing off the barricades. No one ever kills off the barricades. It's always like accidental AOE that does it. All right, dark green, yellow, stopping. A dark green's gonna flank. See, this is the advantage of having two players against one, is you're like, I'll hold. Oh, that's right. Two of you. Two positions. Many, many thoughts I wasn't considering. Growlithe, what are you up to? Yeah, he's just hanging out. Rokon still has... He's basically the full healer for this group. No chain heals, but god damn, Rokon has good heals. Plus the crown. Don't want to tell you. Dark Spear Warlords and Orc Champions. <laughs> waiting for the WoW patch, huh? I am doing this recording because I'm waiting for Warlords of Drenner. I am... Hold on. Hold on. Oh, god damn it. Alright, so I was 2,766 in line, and now uh, uh, because I looked at it, my internet, it, it dropped me, and I was disconnected, and now I'm 4,700-something in line. I don't even... I'm, I don't even want to get to play at all. It really sucks. I was really looking forward to playing. I had this whole plan about how I was going to have videos out. I was going to be like one of the first people to have videos out and all that. Warlords of Drenner, big thing for the chat. Nothing. Now, that is such a bummer, man. All right, the Night Elves, 4-2 upgrades. I'm guessing they have way too much money. 
He has way too much money. And not enough lumber by a long shot. Holy crap. But Huntresses do absolutely wreck. I'm sorry. They get absolutely wrecked by Stonewall Soldiers. So, I mean, he is kind of just feeding him, though, right now. Chandris and Taronda looking very strong. All right, Red's second attempt. Just going to see how it goes. Quell the loss. Will it hold? Green really needs to bring his mages over here and not have them hanging out over by the Elven Ballista, which can't actually benefit from any of the healing here. So on a Swind Runner, not a terrible position, but not my favorite. All right, Grace decided to wage war on Light Blue. He left. Light Blue left the game, so Gray is now King of Kalimdor. Arthas, level 8, continuing to fight. Oh my god, pathetic. Oh, yeah, exactly. Gray, I agree, that is pathetic. Why are... Okay, a small pullback here is a good idea. Not all the way, though. Red doesn't have enough to crush you guys. Get back in there right now. This is the perfect position. He's ignoring the improved Elven Ballista card towers. Uh, meat wagons are kind of being derpy right now. Get in the fight, and why? The Elven Ballista are kind of... Damn, Sylvanas Windrunner was slain by the Scourge, and now she is a banshee. Which is very good, because if she starts casting the silence on that, it's a really long silence. Yep, bad positioning for everyone involved here. Purple gives Green just a minute to try to retreat, unfortunately. Not looking too good. Ah. Alright, he's got to retreat. Oh, there it goes, Sylvana. Yep, alright, retreat to the second elf gate! You'll never have Syl... <laughs> She's already dead. Uh, so, yeah, kill them, I guess. Yeah, how much money do you have, Green? You have enough that you probably could have repaired the gate. Purple doesn't even... Oh, God. And here comes the landing squad behind everything. Did all the units jump out? They did, but it seems like most of them were killed off by towers and stuff. Thank God. Alright, he's gonna hold it the second gate, but I don't, I don't see what he, he can really do. Teal continues to mass up. Well, Yellow just... Looks like he's gonna tower up the gate, build a small outpost, and hope nothing goes wrong. Blue? What are you up to, Blue? We actually haven't seen Blue do anything right now. Van. Keeping Archimonde around and just doing nothing. I agree. The Imani Pass would have been an excellent idea. And he can still use it. He can still go up the side. Now, he doesn't necessarily have to utilize this gate. And you can see Red trying to retreat Sylvanas. However, the Necromancers are blocking her in. So, we may see her die. Don't die. Don't die. It's such a good Demi. It's such a good Demi. Ah! Okay, it's alive. I was gonna have a fit if she died. Dark green? All plagued up. It's like none of them were wearing protection. Blue is being so passive now that he has the Legion. It's so boring to watch when a blue gets Archimonde and just kind of goes into stasis. He doesn't move, he doesn't do anything. Just get a lot of rings, man. And start fighting. You've got enough units to block up any choke point. I mean, even together, Dark Green and Yellow probably can't kill you with your 2-2 upgrades. Yeah, I didn't see any dispels going down green, so... Sorry to point that one out, buddy. Yep. And it's push. Gray, just going nuts right now. If he has Pillage, he's going to have a lot of fun here wiping up Light Blue stuff. Should have gone... <laughs> yeah, see, I think the Nihilus could have killed you, though, Gray. If he'd just been a little bit smarter, he would have had you. But he wasn't smarter, so there was time. It's all conjecture. This is a situation you find yourself in where you think... You know what? I'm, I'm gonna lose. I'm absolutely going to lose. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some fun before I lose. We're overwhelmed. We're being flanked. <laughs> yeah. We're overwhelmed. We're being flanked. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna stand right in the gate of hell. The maw of the abyss. And we're gonna try our very best to stay alive. We're gonna lock down units. We're gonna face our death head on. Even if a Nubrax got a crown on his head. He was a king, so... Yay. That's appropriate. You, sh you should run now, though. You should run. Maybe not. Maybe not. Holy crap. He's actually kind of holding in there. 
these Ballista are in a perfect position. And I think Sylvanas Winter might die here in a minute with these advanced improved Elvig. Oh god, that Ballista is in such a good position. It's hitting so many Necromancers. Oh, the cleaning up that's going on right now. However, Purple seems to be caught. All of his units are now dying and he can't escape. Oh, ooh, Arthas Menethil still alive. Ten. Ten. Besides, Lupu really needs much less aiming than Green or anyone else. Yeah, that's true. Ah, oh, Red finally managed to wipe him up with a 5-3 upgrade advantage over the, I think, like, nothing. Oh, all the, all the Paladins? All the Paladins. Purple's got one hero left. Oh, charge and probably a surround here on Arthas if he's not careful. Nope, the Elven Magi are the ones that are going to go down. Isaac, 2-3-4, 2-3-1-4? 2-3-1-4. Oh, the gate's broken too, so that's lovely. So Arthas is just kind of going to eat a big... <laughs> he's going to eat a lot right now is what he's going to do. Did orange manage... or purple? He probably lost the army that was spawned there. Whoa! I am so sorry for missing this. Okay, so this insanity is going on right now. And we're going to go ahead. Pause this right here. Varmothris is dead. Varmothris just ate it. Varmothris? Tychondria, sorry. Tychondrius, Malganus. I don't know what I'm talking about, sorry, that's that's when he spawns his latest Sylvanas. Alright, anyway, we're going to go back to this in part 2. Thank you for joining me, this is Azeroth Wars, a Warcraft 3 control point based custom map in which all of the insanity that you're witnessing happens. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye!